Kingdom Hearts is one of my favourite game series of all time. This is for many reasons. I played it as a kid, I was a Disney kid as well also. The combat is super fun, and to be honest, I am one that is super invested in the story. But thankfully, I don't have to talk about any of that in this video. When it comes to platinuming these games, it is a real up and down ride. Some stuff is really fun to do, there's challenging fights, and then there's Monopoly. But which game is the easiest and which is the hardest? That's what we're going to figure out today. And we'll start with the easiest, which is... So this is going to be a really short section. Both of these games have trophies exclusively on the PS3 version of the collections. Now all you have to do is watch the three hour cutscene movie for each title and then read some notes and congratulations, you now have all the trophies. Now technically there is no platinum trophy for these, but just for completionist's sake, they're on the list anyway. So yeah, not a lot to talk about at all. I guess you could start the movie and then go do something else for three hours and come back if you wanted. Although I actually think there are parts where you've got to like press confirm to like read the notes or something. So yeah, they're definitely the easiest though. KH3 is notable for not having any difficulty trophies, which is a real shame as this game is by far the easiest and forcing you to play on, say, Proud at launch would have helped at least a little bit. Looking through the trophy list to remind myself, pun very much intended, there are a few that stick out. We'll start with minigames. I don't think it's too controversial to call KH minigames very hit or miss, and for the plat you need to get a certain amount of points on all of them. Now I don't personally remember this being very difficult at all, but Flash Tracer is actually the rarest trophy in the game, so maybe I've just blocked that from my memory. Now the gummy ship is something that always pops up when looking at the plat, even if most people would probably prefer that it didn't. Due to how this game structures its gummy missions, it is entirely possible not to engage with it much in the actual story, which would then leave you with more to do in the post game. I actually don't mind the gummy missions much, especially in this game where they don't interfere with the pacing of the story as much, and I don't remember struggling or disliking the trophies related to it. There's even a cool boss at the end, which the other games didn't have, which I really appreciate. You also need to complete the gummy phone section, similar to the journal in previous games, as well as 100%ing the cooking. What a lot of this ends up boiling down to though is farming for synthesis materials and cooking ingredients, so while it could take a while, it's not really difficult, is it? Especially if you're using a guide, although I do believe believe the flan missions give ingredients and they were kind of a pain. I remember struggling on a few of them. I also believe you have to do the post-game portals for various things in the gummy phone, including the secret boss Dark Inferno, though he is probably one of the easiest super bosses in the series, maybe even the easiest. I think the main takeaway from KH3 is that, to me at least, they've overcorrected from some of the harder plats that we'll see later and it's just too easy, both the platinum and also just the game in general. The most different Kingdom Hearts game currently, being a rhythm game as opposed to an action RPG. Feel like this one could be contentious just because it is so different. If you're bad at rhythm games, you'll find this a lot harder than I did. Personally, I think I'm pretty alright at rhythm games. Not amazing, but not terrible either. The trophy that takes the longest by far is for defeating 100,000 enemies, which is a lot to be fair, but a positive to this is that you don't have to actively pursue it and you can focus on everything else first and then focus on this one at the end. Though from what I remember there was still a lot left on this one even after I'd done every other trophy. Speaking of the other trophies, you need to beat every song on all difficulties, which also requires you to synthesize some of them. The hardest trophy is probably full chaining 50 songs on the proud difficulty. This is one of those lists that is hard to go in depth on because it just boils down to playing songs as much as you can to get everything. And like I said, as long as you get everything done before hitting that 100,000 enemies, you've not lost any time really. If I had to name my least favourite Kingdom Hearts game, it might be this one. Combat is still pretty fun admittedly, but I'm really not a fan of the dreamy uh, pet simulator stuff. It also does kind of suck that in the endgame, Balloonra is almost always the correct choice regardless of what you're up against, which makes quite a boring experience in my opinion. Even the super boss falls relatively easier to the might of balloons. There's also no difficulty trophy, so you're free to do this all on beginner. For the plat in this game, you need to do your usual mini games and items and whatnot, but you also need to create every spirit in the game, which I don't find very fun. 
Adding on to that, you need to get all commands, which takes some grinding, and I personally remember there's the Flick Rush minigame, which I remember really struggling with, and is in fact my main memory of platinum this game, is just struggling on the Flick Rush. I don't know if that's just me that had that problem, or if it's a universal thing. I think the reason I dislike this plat is the grinding feels so much worse than earlier games. Maybe it's just because of the Dream Eater like minigame petting mechanic being really boring to me, and just not liking how all the abilities are tied to it either. I love this game so much. It's my favourite game ever, so maybe that is affecting the ranking somewhat, but who cares, it's my list. The plat basically requires you to do everything in the game, and now I've got to decide where to start. I guess with the journal? You gotta beat all minigames at a certain level and do synthesis, but honestly that's not interesting at all. Just use a guide for material locations, you know the drill. Somewhat related, but there's also a trophy for getting 5,000 points on a skateboard that I vividly remember taking way longer than it should have. You've also got to do all the cups in Olympus Colosseum, including the extra long Hades Paradox Cup, which you need to max level drives and summons to unlock. This sounds like it would take a while to do, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that long at all. The cup itself is challenging, but in my opinion, very fun. There's also the Mushroom 13, which I actually remember struggling a whole ton on, particularly the one you need to juggle in the air, it felt very like RNG, depending on the moves Sora would do, it was really finicky, I wasn't a fan of it. For the gummy missions, you need to S rank all of them. Now this sounds really difficult, but if you don't know, I'm about to give you the key to making this considerably easier. Ready? Make a donut ship. Most enemy bullets aim for the center, and if you have no center, they don't hit you. Add a bunch of guns, and voila, gummy missions are now easy. I'll be honest, I actually really like the KH2 gummy missions when I'm not forced to do them to progress the story. I feel like I'm forgetting something- oh right, yeah, the super bosses. This game has 15, arguably 16 super bosses because one has two phases. The easiest is Sephiroth, who I haven't struggled with since I was about 9 years old. The data organization is considerably harder, and I find most of them a fun remix on their original fights. Except for Demix, that's just unfair. Then there's the Lingering Will. God, this fight is difficult at times, but the first time I beat it was genuinely one of the most fulfilling moments I've ever had. Oh, I think you can cheese it, but uh, that's boring. One last thing, you've got to beat the game on critical mode, so do it all in one playthrough. Have fun doing all the super bosses on crit, I did. I love this plat so much. God, this game is so good. I was surprised that I ended up putting this relatively short game this high up on the list. The main reason for this is because of the objectives. There are some that require you to beat the bosses without taking any damage, which is certainly not something you're going to do right away, going to take a bit of time to learn the patterns and dodge accordingly. There are other objectives that need you to do oddly specific things, like spin while in all custom clothing. These aren't especially difficult if you are making an effort to go for them, but you probably won't get them if you don't know what you're doing. There's also a separate trophy for beating the game without dying, which is easy enough on beginner, but if you screw up at any point this could cost you another run, which would be most unfortunate. You've also got to beat the game on critical mode for the objectives, which yeah, considerably ups the difficulty of this game. Overall though, what does help the game is that it is much shorter than the traditional games, so even if you do need to do repeat runs or don't have an ideal save near a boss anywhere, it doesn't take you that much time to restart and get back to where you need to be. The game that started it all. For platinuming, which version you're playing actually does make a big difference. The PS3 version difficulty trophies don't stack at all, while the PS4 versions do. While this is a very good change, I still wouldn't recommend doing everything on the hardest difficulty. The reason for this is there are also trophies for beating the game within 15 hours, without dying, and also not changing your equipment at all, which is all much easier to do on beginner mode than proud. You will obviously need to do a proud run though, as well. Regular KH trophies are here again, do the journal, do your item synthesis, all your favourites. One thing, or technically three things this game does, is make you get all the weapons for all three characters. Now this sounds pretty easy and you're probably thinking you'll just get it as you go and play the game synthing all items or whatnot, but no, this game some of the weapons are dropped by enemies. You know what that means, farming enemies for hours so that they drop the damn wizard staff. Maybe it was just me that had bad luck with this, but farming these took so long, and yeah I know, just get lucky, just get lucky, it's easy. No, it's impossible to get lucky for me. I'm very not lucky. When it comes to gummy missions, there is a weird thing to note. On the PS3 version, you need to get all the blueprints, while on the PS4, you only need to get 30 out of about 48, by my count. This does make it so you have to do far fewer gummy missions. Just as an example, you needed to do all the level 3 missions on PS3, while on PS4, I believe you can just do one. 
No idea why they changed this. They also changed difficulty trophies to stack, as I mentioned before, but that makes way more sense than this does. I guess even they knew that no one wanted to do the gummy missions in this game. Finally, let's talk about the super bosses quickly. Ice Titan is pretty easy if you have Guard, Phantom is no challenge once you know how to stop the clock, and Kurt Ziza is just kind of there. He's pretty unmemorable. That just leaves the big ones. Sephiroth is probably my favorite in this game. He's a decent challenge, far more than the Kingdom Hearts 2 version. And then we have the unknown slash mysterious man slash Xemnas. I personally found this fight a lot easier than Sephiroth, maybe because you have your party members with you, though let's be honest, they're not really helpful, are they? The super bosses are definitely easier than Kingdom Hearts 2, so they're not the reason this game is ranked higher. It's mostly other factors, such as the replaying on PS3, the game being the hardest of the numbered Kingdom Hearts games, and also the bad random farming trophy. No, I will not forgive them for those hours I spent. No, I will not. Now, I have a real soft spot for this game, and I don't really know why. But let me tell you, that does not extend to the Platinum Trophy. This is the grindiest one. There is no getting away from that. This is the grindiest one. The first big grind is also the most boring. You need to get both Sora and Riku to level 99. This would be fine if you were anywhere close to this by the end game or if there was a way to speed it up, but literally all you can do is go to the last floor and fight enemies. There's no trick to it, it takes ages, and it's not fun at all. One character would be bad enough, but it actually takes longer with Riku, so have fun killing Neo Shadows for however many hours. But as long as this may take, at least you're always getting experience every time you defeat an enemy. What if you needed to farm random drops? That sounds awful. So, you need to get every card in the game. Most of these aren't too difficult and you'll probably get them as you go through. However, it is the enemy cards that will stump you. The way I understand it, I'm not an expert, every enemy has a small chance to drop their card. Have I mentioned that I hate trophies entirely decided by randomness yet? Because I'm gonna say it now if I haven't before. This can take so long, and I don't know if there's some manipulation you can do to get it to drop more consistently, maybe difficulty affects it, but honestly, I don't know and I don't think it would save the trophy very much. One last thing to note is that as with Kingdom Hearts 1, the PS3 version difficulty trophies don't stack, which means you would need to play through the game technically six times, three with each character. And God, that is time consuming. PS3 strugglers, raise your hand, I'm with you. God, I don't like this plan. What's worse than doing everything in a game once? That's right, doing it three times. It's not even stuff that you want to do more than once either. It's really boring mini games and of course, command board, which, uh, God, I can't stand this. If you only had to do it all once, it would be, you know, fine. Fine, it's, it's, it's not bad, not good, it's just there. But three times, three times you have to play the same slow ass board game for this platinum. This alone takes hours upon hours, even assuming you win the first try every time. What else you gotta do in this game? Oh yeah, make all commands for all three characters, so triple the grinding there, whoopee, fun. You know, if all this carried over between characters and you just had to do this once, it would it'd be fine. I'd enjoy the plat a lot. I like this game a decent amount. You also need to beat critical mode, and personally, I think this is the hardest game on crit, especially in the early game when you don't have the good commands like the surges. One way I remember making this easier is getting EXP warp as early as possible, and then walking instead of dodging or jumping to get experience and get a bit over leveled. The super bosses in this game are also, let's be kind and say, not the greatest. Vanitas Remnant is the easiest because you can cheese him by hiding behind a rock. No, it's not honorable at all, but it gets the job done. The other three being Armor of the Master, No Heart, and Mysterious Figure all suffer from the surges being overpowered due to the invincibility frames and so will hopefully not take you too long. Mysterious Figure though especially is complete BS, especially as Terra. Oh right, I almost forgot, of course you have to do all the super bosses with all three characters because yeah of course you do, why not? Overall though, this game I think is the hardest just difficulty wise, and the fact you have to do everything three times is just makes the Platinum the hardest, and I don't want to hear anyone complaining that this isn't the hardest standalone game. Hello Kingdom Hearts 3, nice to see you again. Yeah, there is a massive disparity between the base game trophy difficulty and then Remind DLC, so I thought I'm gonna pop it in at the end. Where to begin with it? Well, let's start with the easy codes. You get some challenges to do, which I really don't remember being difficult at launch, and now there's more exhaustive guys you can use, but only 0.3% of people have this, so I thought I'd mention it. Now the super bosses in this DLC are something else entirely. For the data fights, unlike Kingdom Hearts 2, these are brand new fights here with brand new moves and they're all considerably challenging. 
And then there's Yozora, who I have only beaten the one time, but I find him one of the harder super bosses in the series. All of these though are much harder than the base game super boss. Sorry Dark Inferno, you kinda suck. Then finally we have the Pro Code Trophy, the rarest trophy in the game. For this you need to reach the highest Pro Code rank. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this. Basically how this works is you need to get 365,000 points. Now how you get points is by clearing big fights in the story with Pro Codes on, which means you're gonna need to make a new save. These are designed to make your life harder. So for example, one of the Pro Codes gives you level 1 stats. Another one disables all your special attacks, and they can give you constantly draining HP and MP. Now obviously the more of these pro codes you enable, the more points you get once you beat a fight, and the less of the game you will need to do to get to the max rank. But then that of course makes the game much harder. When I was doing it, I got to the Monsters Inc. world boss with all of them enabled, and I just couldn't do it, so I turned a few off to make my life easier. Now I'm sure online there are people who have crunched the numbers to figure out the easiest way to do it, even if that means playing more, you might be, have to play more with some of the harder pro codes turned off. I don't know myself, I'm sure someone's done it. Difficulty doesn't affect this at all though, thankfully, so you can do it all on beginner, but it's still quite difficult. Beginner at level 1 is still not the easiest thing, even if this game is not especially challenging. But yeah, to me, the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC was pleasantly challenging, especially when compared to the base game, even if it took a little bit to adjust because I was expecting it to be just as easy, and it wasn't. And that's the list. Let me know if you agree or if you think that Melody of Memory is actually way harder than I put it and is the hardest game ever made. If you enjoyed, like the video because it lets me know that you like it and also helps me out on the old algorithm. If you want to see more trophy videos, check out the rest of the videos and subscribe while you're there. Why not? It'll be fun. Thank you for watching, hunt them trophs, and I'll see you next time.